Okay, guys. So let's look at the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, basically, hydrogen electrode ni you nak jadikan hydrogen as the electrode. So you must be wondering how, because hydrogen is in gas state. Okay, element dia memang in gas state. So macam mana you nak jadikan hydrogen gas ni as the electrode sedangkan hydrogen ni gas. Electrode ni kena something yang metal. So that's why you remember tak back then, Miss ada terangkan ada dua jenis electrode. Inactive dengan active electrode. So since that you nak gunakan gas as the electrode, so you can matchkan dia up with the uh, inactive electrode. Inactive electrode ada dua, platinum dengan carbon. But if you nak set up she, you kena guna platinum electrode lah. Uh, so, she ni is a half cell. Half cell ni ialah bila electrode tu direndam di dalam electrolyte. So, you nak jadi, although that you use inactive electrode platinum, but actually you masukkan hydrogen gas. So, that means hydrogen gas ni ialah you punya electrode. Okay? So, electrode you, hydrogen gas, that means electrolyte you kenalah solution electrolyte yang mengandungi hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion ni H+. So, macam mana you boleh da nak dapatkan hydrogen ion ni? You boleh dapat bila you letak electrolyte you normally HCl, hydrochloric acid. Okay? And since that this is happening at standard condition, so you can make sure the hydrogen gas supplied must be the pressure at 1 atm. The electrolyte, the punya concentration must be at 1 molar. And this reaction must be at temperature 25 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, Actually, the uh, standard reduction potential ataupun SRP value untuk standard hydrogen electrode she ni ialah 0 volt. Okay, so that's why uh, basically she ni dia akan jadi reference. Okay, supaya kamu dapat tahu the standard reduction potential of the other half cell. So basically, you must be wondering macam mana kamu dapat SRP value yang fix dekat you punya SRP table. So basically because you, uh, apa tu? kan the half cell tu dengan she so it depends lah she ni dia boleh jadi dekat cathode dia boleh jadi dekat anode okay it depends on the uh, half cell yang you matchkan she ni okay so half cell equation of she uh, if you look at here dia punya dia bagi irreversible because it can be either two sebab she ni dia boleh jadi dekat anode boleh jadi dekat cathode so ni tak penting sangat pun Okay, next exercise, I nak you draw she because sometimes the uh, soalan exam disuruh kamu draw the standard hydrogen electrode. So, the way you want to draw this, you can ingat baliklah she ni ialah standard hydrogen electrode. So, basically, you akan supply hydrogen gas, okay, at 1 atm since that this is happening at standard condition and electrode yang you akan gunakan ialah inactive electrode platinum. Okay, and then you akan rendamkan this electrode di dalam electrolyte yang mengandungi H plus ion aqueous at 1.0 molar. And it must happen at 25 degree Celsius. And you need to remember the SRP value untuk she ni ialah 0 volt. And that's why uh, she ni half cell reference. Okay guys, so basically you dapat value SRP for each of the half cells in this table, SRP table is sebab you connectkan each of these half cells dengan she. Okay, she ni, that's why they reference half cell because dia punya SRP value dia is 0 volt. So, senang kamu nak detect the other half cell punya SRP value. Okay, so basically she ni is either uh, dia boleh jadi cathode ataupun anode depends on the half cell yang connected to she uh, and the cell notation untuk she ni ada dua jenis ok kalau let's say dia berada di cathode uh, that means dia berada dekat ujung-ujung kan you ingat tak cell notation ni you kena ingat apa you have to remember A, B, C anode bridge cathode so kalau let's say you nak tulis cell notation untuk she bila dia berada di cathode ok this is the uh, apa yang proses yang berlaku lah dekat cathode tu you kena start dengan electrolyte, okay, and then uh, dengan gas yang you supply, and lastly the inactive electrode platinum in solid state, okay. Kalau dia berada di anode, you kena start dengan electrode of the anode, which is you use the inactive electrode platinum in solid state, and then you supplykan gas, hydrogen gas, tu jangan lupa, and then condition 1 atm, and also lastly is your electrolyte lah dekat anode yang you letak, yang you redamkan anode you tu, which is H plus ion, uh, in aqueous solution, and also concentration standard kena 1 molar. 
Ha, ni yang Miss bagi tahu tu, she ni the half cell and then dia boleh jadi end node, dia boleh jadi get node. Depends on the half cell yang dia connected with. Okay, so kalau let's say she ni jadi end node, most probably because dia connected to a metal yang less electropositive. Okay, kalau let's say she ni dia jadi get node, most probably because dia connected to a metal yang more electropositive. Okay, so apa pun you kena tahu electron ni flows from end node to get node. Okay guys, so let's look at the first example. Okay, this is a galvanic cell where you add a dual half cell kat sini. The first half cell, uh, which is, this is N0 because this is a negative terminal. So, you punya first half cell ialah zinc. Your second half cell, this is the positive terminal. That means this is cathode. Okay, so your second half cell ialah standard hydrogen electrode. So the question wants you to write the cell notation of the galvanic cell and find the standard reduction potential value of zinc. So you need to remember kat sini kedudukan she ialah di ketoid. Alright guys, so how can we write the cell notation uh, from the previous galvanic cell setup? We can see that she berada dekat ketoid. On my previous slides, I already told you guys, kalau let's say cell notation bila she berada dekat ketoid macam mana. So this is how you should write bila standard hydrogen electrode berada di ketoid. Dia punya cell notation dia. And you can remember cell notation ni, uh, you can remember A, B, C. A ialah anoid, B, salt bridge, C, Ketoid. So, you kena start dengan elektrod, ending pun dengan elektrod juga, okay? Uh, although that this is inactive elektrod, you kena end dengan elektrod juga. So, bila you start dengan elektrod anoid, you know that you use zinc as the elektrod at the anoid. And then, zinc tu you immersekan dia di dalam solution yang contain the zinc ion uh, in aqueous state and also the molarity ialah satu molar because it's happening at the standard condition and dia dipisahkan oleh bridge after bridge terus jumpa uh, terus jumpa SHE half cell hydrogen okay so in half cell hydrogen since that you jadikan standard hydrogen electrode as your cathode so you guna hydrogen as your electrode right that means the electrode must be immersed in a solution, aqueous solution, yang contain hydrogen ions. Okay, so H plus aqueous and then concentration satu molar because it's happening at standard condition. And kat sini extranya, okay, sebabkan hydrogen tu, uh, you nak jadikan dia sebagai electrode but it's in gas form, that's why dia akan guna inactive electrode. Okay, so you kena tulis juga bila you supply hydrogen gas tu and the pressure must be at 1 atm because it's standard condition and then uh, after that barulah you tulis inactive electrode yang you gunakan to pair up with the uh, hydrogen gas electrode. Okay, um, so platinum as usual lah in solid state. Alright, next, uh, the question wants you to find the SRP value for the half cell of zinc. Okay, since that your zinc is at the anode, uh, so this will come find the SRP anode. Okay, uh, sekarang ni you punya cathode, uh, SRP value dia uh, zero because you guna she. Okay, and then you punya standard cell potential dah dibagi dalam soalan. So, you just masukkan saja. You know that uh, E bullet cell is equal to SRP untuk she minuskan dengan SRP untuk anoid zinc okay so you masukkan saja and at the end you will find you punya srp value for zinc is negative 0.76 all right so basically benda ni you tak perlu buat sangat pun okay unless the question wants you to find the overall ataupun balance cell reaction kalau dia suruh kamu find the srp value you terus direct je gunakan this formula, gunakan information yang ada. She, you tahu anything, she tu tak kisahlah dia ketot ke dia anot ke, it must be zero. But in this case, uh, she kamu berada dekat ketot. So, ketot kamu punya SRP value zero lah. Uh, this one diberi dalam soalan and finally you will find the SRP value that you want to find. Okay? Okay, so if you look at this example too, this will come cari standard reduction potential untuk copper. So, this is a galvanic cell set up and okay, you kat sini you jangan tertipu ya. You jangan fikir anode selalu dekat kiri, cathode selalu dekat kanan. You kena tengok kat sini, dia bagi negatif kat sini, positif kat sini. That means this is a negative terminal. So, bila this is a negative terminal, that means uh, she you 
berada di anoid. Copper berada di cathode. Okay. So, you kena peka. Tengok you punya uh, galvanic cell setup yang diberi. Alright. Alright guys. Soalan suruh kamu cari apa? Soalan suruh kamu cari SRP value untuk copper. So, basically this thing tak perlu sangat pun. Okay. Sebab ni, from the previous galvanic cell setup, you already know she tu berada dekat anode. Right. Uh, so, by using this formula, uh, standard cell potential is equal to SRP value untuk cathode minus SRP value for anode. You tahu, she berada dekat anode. So, anode ni dah sah-sah kena zero. Okay, this is something that you want to find. This is something given in the question. But just in case, if let's say, soalan tanya pasal uh, write the balance ataupun overall cell reaction that is happening. So, this is how you should write it up. Okay. Uh, di mana kalau you dah tahu anode you adalah she and then anode ni akan undergoes oxidation which dia akan lose electron this is how it looks like and at your cathode is your copper so copper dia undergoes reduction that means dia akan gain electron so this is how it looks like for the half cell reaction equation untuk cathode uh, but this is the main point okay this is what the question wants the SRP value of copper so you just masukkan saja and at the end you will find you punya SRP value untuk copper is positive 0.34 volt Okay, so now let's move on to example 3. Example 3 dia macam special sikit sebab anode dengan cathode, you guess. How can you know? You look at this cell notation, okay? From this cell notation, you can know that this is your anode, okay? This is the bridge and this is your cathode. And you can see that anode you memanglah guna SHE. How about your cathode? This is something new to you but don't worry. So your cathode, that means you guna chlorine gas. So don't worry. And dia dah bagi kat sini um, the standard cell potential and also dia suruh kamu draw a diagram to show the apparatus and chemicals used and discuss the chemical reactions occur in the electrochemical cell. Okay, macam mana kamu nak draw the diagram according to this cell notation? Okay, jangan risau. You just kena tahu je. Okay, this part ialah anode. So, your anode ialah hydrogen gas atau dikenali sebagai standard hydrogen electrode. Your cathode here ialah chlorine gas. Tapi jangan risau. Any gas electrode, okay? Any gas electrode, you kena, kalau bila you nak lukis dia punya galvanic cell diagram, any gas electrode you kena lukis dia macam you lukis standard hydrogen electrode okay sebab kat sini bila you guna gas kan in this case you guna gas cl as your electrode of course lah gas tu kan macam bukan metal electrode you kena metal so that's why you guna inactive electrode platinum here okay uh, so sekarang ni you kena draw lah dua beaker macam biasa Kalau galvanic cell kena ada dua beaker yang diisi electrolyte Connected by a salt bridge Salt bridge ni kena letak wajib because salt bridge ni Akan completekan the circuit And then these two electrodes platinum will be connected by a wire and also voltmeter And then atas voltmeter you know kan standard cell potential ni You dapat reading dia daripada voltmeter so you kena tulis and label that and also, you kena make sure you uh, label lah you punya negative dengan positive terminal because negative terminal U and not positive terminal U ialah cathode and the rest you just uh, label kan je. Okay. So, you tahu uh, this is your anode. Dekat your anode ni, you akan supply hydrogen gas at 180M. Alright. Uh, and after that, uh, dia akan bubbling lah kat bawah ni di dalam electrolyte yang mengandungi ion hydrogen. Okay. Echo solution and one molar. And sebab dah bagi tahu kat sini, so you labelkan. And please labelkan your uh, inactive electrode as well. Okay. Well, at your cathode, you labelkan juga apa yang berlaku dekat cathode. Okay. Dekat cathode, you masukkan chlorine gas. Okay, dengan pressure 180 m and after that dia akan bubbling di dalam solution yang mengandungi electrolyte chlorine. Okay, chlorine kalau dia jadi ion is Cl minus uh, in aqueous solution and also one molar. And please don't forget to labelkan you punya inactive electrode platinum here. Okay. 
Okay, lastly, the question wants you to discuss the chemical reactions that happen in the electrochemical cell. So, you kena bagi tahu apa yang berlaku dekat anode, apa berlaku dekat ketod, and what is the overall cell reaction equation, okay? So, what happened at the anode? Anode, you ada letak hydrogen gas, kan? So, uh, anode ni ada akan undergo oxidation, that means dia akan lose electron. So, this hydrogen gas, bila dia lose electron, dia akan form ion H+. Aqueous form. Okay. Ketod, you supply chlorine gas kan. Dia akan undergo reduction. That means dia akan gain electron. Siapa yang gain electron? Yang gain electron in this case bukan ion Cl tetapi Cl2 gas. Uh, memang, I know that it's weird but you get used to it. So, basically, chlorine gas ni, uh, dia akan gain electron dan dia akan form chlorine ion. Okay. But initially, if you look at here, um, you tak balance pun this thing So to need to balance kan it out You tengok ni You ada 2 mole of hydrogen gas But then you tengok kat sini You ada 1 mole of hydrogen ion So what can you do to balance kan Sekarang ni charge ni dah memang balance Sebab positive one charge kena balance kan dengan 1 electron But the number of mole of hydrogen ni tak balance So to balance kan You kena add 2 kat depan uh, hydrogen ion ni so since that you letak 2 kat hydrogen ion that means uh, dia dah jadi macam positive tu lah secara tak langsung so that's why you need to balance it out by letak 2 dekat depan elektron juga to balance kan positive 2 kat sini disebabkan you nak balance kan dengan number bilangan-bilangan of hydrogen gas dekat reactant so that's why you tak kalikan semua dengan dua, you just nak balance kan je, okay? In this case pun, dia tak balance ni sebab if you look at the reactant, you have dua chlorine atom, uh, dua chlorine gas and kat sini you ada satu mole of chlorine ion. So what can you do here? You need to letak dua dekat depan Cl- ni. So kat sini secara tak langsung, it is considered as 2 minus ion now okay now uh, sekarang tak balance lah because dia dah ada 2 minus ion so you want to balance it out you need to put 2 electron okay uh, so kiranya after dah balance you bolehlah letak macam ni and you can cancel out the electron since dah sama lepas tu you akan dapat lah your overall selection equation Okay guys, so this one, I want you to try this out to draw the diagram according to this cell notation and since this is happening at standard condition, so walaupun dekat cell notation ni dia tak mention 1 atm dengan 1 molar but when you want to draw it out, I want you to mention dia punya condition, okay? And then, uh, please lah, make sure apa yang you dapat ni betul and voltmeter, you letak lah in not cell berapa kat atas ni, the salt bridge, okay? And then you can check out the answer here. Okay, so this is something that I want you to remember again. You can remember she ni dia boleh jadi dekat anode ataupun dia boleh jadi dekat cathode. Depends on dia pair dengan half cell yang macam mana, okay? And cell notation untuk she ni, kalau let's say dia berada dekat cathode, this is how it looks like. Kat anode, this is how it looks like. But in either case, walaupun dia dekat cathode ke, dia dekat anode ke, the standard reduction potential untuk she remains zero. Okay? Okay guys, so let's look at the second last part of galvanic cell that you need to know which is about the strength of reducing and oxidizing agents. And the strength of this, you can know it by looking at the SRP value. Okay, so the more positive the SRP value, the stronger the oxidizing agent. And the more negative the SRP value, the stronger the reducing agent. Okay, so if let's say you add three half cells with three different um, SRP value respectively, if let's say you want to determine the stronger oxidizing agent, you should measure it daripada negative ke positive. Okay, uh, so from here we know that PR is the strongest oxidizing agent because there are uh, more positive SRP value, okay? And then if let's say you want to find the strength of reducing agent, you can look at this as SRP value and you uh, cari yang paling negative, which is in this case is CR. So, we can conclude here that CR 
uh, is the strongest reducing agent. All right. Okay, guys, so let's look at this example. This will come arrange these three elements in order of increasing strength of reducing agents. So as you know, reducing agents is the species that undergoes oxidation and oxidation is the species that lose electrons. So which one lose electron is these elements, okay? X, Y, and juga L, and they have the respective SRP values. So the question wants you to susun in the order of the strength of reducing agents. That means, if uh, you not find the, a stronger reducing agent, you can make sure the SRP value can be more negative. Okay, uh, so you don't get any which one has the more negative uh, SRP value. The most negative SRP value is Y species Y. Okay, and then you get the X and juga L. So susunan di macam ni lah. L is less than X, less than Y. Okay, if you look at example 2, this will come in the increasing order of oxidizing agent. You should know oxidizing agent, in this case, in dimension ialah H2O2, KMnO4 and K2Cr207. And given that, are the three different half cells that according to these three oxidizing agents and with three different uh, three different SRP value with respect to the each of the half cell equations. Alright, so if let's say you not tahu better oxidizing agent, you should know the more the positive value of the SRP, the better the oxidizing agent. So you need to find the most positive value here. So we can find here that H2O2 has the highest positive value compared to um, KMnO4 and also K2Cr207. So you susun saja. Uh, so K2Cr207 is the weakest oxidizing agent and H2O2 is the best oxidizing agent. Okay, so for try this one, I want you to try this out. Okay, kalau let's say uh, another tips yang Miss nak bagi tahu, kalau let's say dia bagi siap-siap the reducing agent, uh, you bawa keluar je. You tak perlu nak macam ambil AG plus ke nanti you pening-pening kepala kan. Okay, apa yang dia bagi, you jawab. Okay, and then you jawab according to what the question wants. If let's say dia nak suruh kamu susun in the order of uh, increasing strength of reducing agent, so you should find the SRP value yang paling negative. Okay. I want you to try this out too and this is the answer that you can check it out later. Okay, so macam mana kamu nak tentukan the spontaneity of the reaction? Basically, you tengok saja dekat uh, you punya value of your standard cell potential. Okay, standard cell potential tu kalau you dapat positive value, that means the reaction is spontaneous. Kalau let's say you dapat negative value, that means it's a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, kalau you dapat equal to zero, that means the reaction is at equilibrium. How can you find the standard cell potential? You can find it through this formula. Okay, for example, if you have this redox reaction equation and dia bagi SRP value respect to uh, zinc and also SN. So, sekarang ni, you nak tahu the spontaneity. So, you can know the spontaneity if only you find the standard cell potential ataupun e bullet cell ni. So, how can you find it? You need to know the SRP value of your cathode and your SRP value of your anode. So, how can you find this out? You can find the SRP values by looking at the SRP value yang given in the question and you need to find the higher SRP value because the higher the SRP value, the more tendency you do untuk jadi cathode. So, who has the higher SRP value? SN. Therefore, SN will be SRP value for cathode. Okay, zinc will be SRP value for anode. Okay, and then you just masukkan saja after you dah determine which one is cathode, which one is anode. And you will get the standard cell potential for this uh, redox reaction equation is positive, 0.91 volt. Okay, so what's matter is the positive sign ni. Okay, so when you know that the standard cell potential is positive, that means the reaction is spontaneous. Okay guys, let's look at the example 2. Dia suruh kamu predict the spontaneity of this redox reaction 2. Okay, kat sini dia tak bagi kamu, uh, dekat soalan ni dia tak bagi kamu the SRP value untuk lead dengan CL kan. But actually, kalau dalam exam, mesti tu dia kena bagi kamu SRP value untuk lead dengan CL. So, uh, actually kamu tak perlulah penat-penat nak tentukan siapa yang lose electron, siapa yang ada increase in oxidation number atau decrease in oxidation number untuk tahu siapa yang undergoes oxidation dengan reduction because... By just looking at the SRP value, 
you can know siapa yang dekat cathode dengan siapa yang dekat anode okay so because the one yang ada higher SRP value will be the cathode so in this case SRP value untuk chlorine is higher than lead therefore Cl will be at the cathode and Cl akan undergo reduction while lead akan undergo oxidation okay so again to predict the spontaneity you need to use this uh, formula to find the standard cell potential and after that you akan dapatlah jawapan untuk you punya standard cell potential and you will know that it is negative so once you know that it is negative you dah tahu dah dia punya uh, reaction is non spontaneous